Glory to Jesus Christ. Today we'll be reading the gospel for the Feast of Transfiguration, uh, which falls on Sunday this year. Uh, and the gospel for the feast is Matthew 17, 1 to 9. Uh, and then we'll read the commentary from the Blessed Theophilact. So the gospel for the Feast of Transfiguration. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now, as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And then uh, from the blessed Theophilact, we have the commentary on this gospel. So verse 1, and after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother. This does not contradict what Luke says, and it came to pass about eight days after these sayings. For Luke counts both the first day and the last day on which they ascended the mountain. But Matthew counts only the days in between. Christ took Peter because of Peter's strong love for him, he took John because Christ loved him, and he took James because James too was zealous. That James had zeal is evident from his promise to drink the cup that Christ would drink, and from the fact that Herod slew him with the sword to please the Jews. And then the end of verse 1 into verse 2, I... And he led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. He brings them up on to a high mountain, showing that unless a man is raised up high, he does not become worthy of such divine visions. A mountain set apart, because Christ would often perform the most wondrous of his miracles in secret, lest the multitude see him as God and think that he was human in appearance only. When you hear... He was transfigured, do not think that he had cast off his body at that moment, for his body remained in its own form, as you hear mention of his face and his clothing, but it appeared more resplendent, the divine exhibiting in small part its effulgence as much as they were able to see. This is why he had also previously spoken of the transfiguration as the kingdom of God in Matthew 16:28 for it exhibited the indescribable majesty of his power. It showed that he is the true son of the Father, and it had the aspect of the second coming on account of the ineffable radiance of Jesus' face. And then verse 3, And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. What were they talking about? The ending, says Luke, which he should accomplish in Jerusalem, uh, Luke 9, 31, namely the cross. Why did Moses and Elijah appear? To show that he is Lord of the law and of the prophets and of the living and of the dead. For Elijah was a prophet and still lived, while Moses was a lawgiver and had died. They also appeared so that it might be seen that he was opposed neither to the law nor to God. For Moses would not have spoken with one opposed to his own laws, nor would Elijah the zealot have endured one who was opposed to God. And they appeared for yet another reason, to prove false the opinion of those who said that he was Elijah or one of the prophets. How did the disciples know that these two were Moses and Elijah? Not, of course, from icons, for at that time it was considered impious to draw pictures of men. It would seem then that they recognized them by the words which they were speaking, for Moses perhaps was saying, You are he whose passion I prefigured, 
when I slaughtered the lamb and performed the Pascha uh, from uh, Matthew 26, 1. And Elijah, you are he whose resurrection I prefigured when I raised the widow's son. And such words as these, by showing Moses and Elijah to the disciples, Christ teaches the disciples to imitate them, to be both meek and leaders of men, as was Moses to be zealous and, when necessary, unyielding, as was Elijah, and to be fearless, as they both were for the truth. Then answered Peter in verse 4, and said to Jesus, It is good for us to be here. If you will, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter, out of great love, did not want Christ to suffer. And so he said, It is good to stay here and for you not to go down and be slain. And if anyone should come here, we have both Moses and Elijah to help us. For Moses contended with the Egyptians, and Elijah called down fire out of heaven. Such opponents do we have for any enemies who might come here. He spoke these things out of great fear, not knowing, as Luke says, what he was saying. For either the extraordinary nature of the event had dumbfounded him, or he truly did not know what he was saying when he spoke of wanting Jesus to remain on the mountain and not come down and suffer for our sake. But fearing to appear presumptuous, Peter said, If you will. And verse 5, While he spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice, behold, a voice came out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. You, Peter, desire tabernacles made with hands, but the Father has formed around them another tabernacle not made with hands, the cloud showing that just as he himself appeared as God in a cloud to the men of old, so also do his, does his Son now appear in a cloud. Here the cloud is bright, not dark as in the time of old, for he desires not to bring fear, but to teach. Out of the cloud came the voice to show that it was of God, in whom I am well pleased, that is, in whom I rest and take pleasure. And he teaches, hear him, and if he wills to be crucified, oppose him not. In verses 6 to 8, And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man except Jesus. Not able to endure the brightness of the cloud nor the voice, the disciples fell to the ground. Their eyes were also heavy with sleep, as Luke says, sleep indicating the days caused by the vision, lest the fear grip them for a long time and obliterate the memory of what they had seen the Lord rouses them and reassures them. He is seen to be alone, so that you will not imagine that the voice was for Moses or Elijah. Indeed, the voice was for Christ, as he is the Son. And then verse 9, And they came down from the mountain, and Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man is risen again from the dead. Out of humility, he orders them to tell no one and also so that those who might hear such things would not later be scandalized when they saw him crucified. For they would think that he was a deceiver who had conjured up godlike visions. But you, O reader, learn that after six days, that is, after the six days in which the world was created, comes the vision of God. For if you do not transcend the world and are not raised up on the mountaintop, you will not see glorious things, neither Jesus' face, which is his divinity, nor his clothing, which is his flesh. May you then also see Moses and Elijah conversing with Jesus. For the law, the prophets, and Jesus speak harmoniously as one. But also when you find someone brilliantly interpreting the meaning of Scripture, know that this man is beholding the brilliant face of Jesus. And if that man is rendering the words of Scripture clear and bright, know that he is beholding the white clothing of Jesus. For the words are the clothing of the thoughts. But do not say, as did Peter, it is good for us to be here. For must, one must always be advancing and not standing still on the same level of virtue and vision, but moving on to another place. And this is the Gospel for the great feast of the transfiguration of our Lord. Glory to Jesus Christ.